Surah Al-Qarim. In this Surah, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala shows again recurring uh, themes. And actually, the thing we were mentioning about uh, the celestial objects, that is a, a, a style of the Meccan Surahs. So if you see, for example, testifications, celestial objects, a lot of times you recognize that that's a Meccan Surah. If you see the ayats coming short, and you know, talking about like this aqidah, the hereafter, and so on. Not saying that Medjani Surahs don't do that also, but it becomes like a characteristic of the early revelation. And there are diff- there's a different style to the Medjani Surahs, and we actually have some Surahs in Juz'amma, three Surahs, that are Medjani style, and inshallah we'll get to that, and you'll see uh, the style change, in surah, specifically in Surah um, Bayina. Lam yakun al-ladina. The recurring theme in this surah is the aqidah of a believer, what they should be believing in, the aqidah, and specifically in this surah, the belief in resurrection. The belief in resurrection. And this surah also talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ability to raise life after death. Allah's ability to raise life after death. And that He's Qadr subhanahu wa ta'ala to do this. And the surah also talks about the necessity of this resurrection so that justice will be given to everyone. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالسَّمَاءِ وَالطَّارِقِ وَمَا أَجْرَاكَ مَفْطَارِقِ النَّجْمُ الثَّاقِبِ إِنْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ لَمَّا عَلَيْهَا حَافِظٍ فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقَ خُلِقَ مِمَّا إِنْ دَافِقَ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ إِنَّهُ عَلَى رَجْعِهِ لَقَادِرِ يَوْمَ تُبْلَى السَّرَائِرِ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ والسماء ذات الرجع والأرض ذات الصدع إنه لقول فصل وما هو بالهزل إنهم يكيدون كيدا وأكيد كيدا فنهل الكافرين أمهلهم رويدا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah begins with the testification وَالسَّمَاءِ وَالطَّارِقِ Those two things by the heaven and by a tariq Tariq is um, Tariq al-bab means to pound on the door and the tariq are things they would say calamities that will befall at night and we're going to talk about that in another surah coming up Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying what is this that's coming through the night وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقِ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing the intensity of this testification that what would make a person understand this tarif, this star. Allah Azza wa says, An Najmu Thaqib. Thaqib, and it might be a name, I think some people heard that name before. Thaqib, you ever heard it? Thaqib is um, if you have a needle and you have a piece of cloth and the needle pokes through the, the the cloth or the text or the garment, that is thaqaba. That is to pierce through. A najmu thaqib. If you've ever um, taken a flashlight, for example, and you see the stars coming down, and you can see the light from the stars, even though they may be millions of light years away, if you take a flashlight and you go like this up to the, up to the stars, do you think someone, if they were on the moon, they would see that flashlight? Would they see it? Or, or a star? That light is nothing like the light of the stars. And in fact that star is such a piercing brightness that it's traveling millions of light years. So what you're seeing actually the sky is not the sky in reality. Because it's a delayed picture of the sky. Meaning that that star, its light is traveling, traveling, traveling. Maybe, you know, a thousand years, two thousand, a million. And then it hits you in earth. 
that star may have died already. It may not be there in the sky, but what you're seeing is like a delayed picture, a pre-recorded picture of the sky because of how far that, uh, that light is coming to reach that human eyesight. And Najm al thaqib and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testifying by this enormous creation of His subhanahu wa ta'ala. So where are these human beings from having anything to do with these stars that are millions of light years away? And so if there's a qasam like you saw in the quiz, there has to be a muqsam alayh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be testifying to something. And here it comes in verse 4. In kullu nafsin la alayha hafid. And here, like, in and lamma, Allah, it's like a negation and then an affirmation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there's not a single human being that does not have hafid, which are the angels recording. And hafid, as you'll see, um, in direct Arabic language, like literally it means a protector. And these angels, there's also protectors of the angels that nothing will happen to the person except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for them. And so, they're also protectors in that sense that they do not allow or, or things. For example, someone wants to take, um, wants to kill someone and Allah hasn't decreed for that person to be killed, they'll be protected. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow that thing to happen. In kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafiz, in the books of tafsir, it's mentioned that Umar radiallahu anhu, he once saw a boy tending to some sheep and he was a slave boy. And so Umar radiallahu anhu said, you know, give me the milk, of, uh, give me some milk. And the boy said, no, these sheep don't belong to me. And then Umar radiallahu anhu, he wanted to test the boy, so he said, look, why don't you just give it to me, give me one of the sheep, and tell your master that uh, a wolf came and he ate the sheep. And so the boy said to Umar radiallahu anhu, فَأَيْنَ Allahu إِذَنْ So where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then? Allah sees me. Who cares about the master? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees me. And Umar radiallahu anhu was very impressed with the boy's answer. And so he went to his master and he said, how much, you know, can I pay it? Because I want to free him. So he paid him the money. He freed the boy and he also bought one of the sheep and he gave it to the boy. And he taught him a lesson. He said, just like your taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freed you in this dunya, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it will free you and protect you in the hereafter also. And actually what comes to mind right now is that Prophet sallallahu said that it may be that some goodness, and this might be a little tangent here, but it may be some goodness is coming to a person and it's a decree that they would receive it, but because of their diso- disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it's diverted away from them. And one of the shiukh, he mentioned that, you know, there was a, a person that he wanted to help with sadaqah and give him money. So he went to his house specifically to give him the money. And when he came to the house, he heard basically like a, a party going on at the house. They were playing like rap, not rap music, but, you know, their, their disco music in the house. And he felt bad that he was going to like knock on, break down the party and give this person sadaqah. In the midst of this, and so he put it back in his pocket and he walked away. And he recalled to himself this hadith that the Prophet said that it may be decreed that this thing, this provision is coming to a person, but because of their disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's diverted away from them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلْيَنظُرِ الْإِنسَانِ مِمَّا خُلِقُ Let the person look at what he was created from. And so Allah azza wa jal, again, the intelligence. Allah is calling the person to use their brain. And not just take them to the land of, oh, the Discovery Channel and so on, look at the human, but take them beyond that to really realize, well, if this is the amazing creation of the human being, then the creator of this has rights over the body. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in another verse, وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَبْدَأُ الْخَلْقِ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ وَهُوَ أَهْوَنُ عَلَيْهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He originates and begins the creation and then He repeats it وَهُوَ أَهْوَنُ عَلَيْهِ and the repetition of the creation is much easier than the first creation. If anybody like creates um, or invents like a microchip or something like that, the first time it's made, that's the hard stage. But after it's made, it can be reproduced very easily. 
And anything in life is like that. Once it's made once, and this is in human logic to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of it is easy. But in their own human logic, how can they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot bring humans back when He created them in the first place? It's much easier in their human logic to recreate something than it is to originate, and they've already seen the original creation of the human. So in the human body, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not just what a person sees on the outside, Allah azza wa jal has, in, in our bodies we have skeletal systems, a muscular system, a nervous system, a cardiovascular system to breathe, and the digestive system. Of the amazing things, and, and there's so many things that a person can say about the human body, one thing that I um, found very interesting is if you put your hand on a, an oven or a stove and something's very hot, what happens? You touch it and then you pull your hand back immediately. Our brains are too slow to process the burn. For example, like someone will, will get burned and then they'll pull their hand back and they'll go, whoa, that was hot. Like they just registered that heat, but if it was the brain that told them, look, pull your hand back, that's very hot. By that time, the person would have been uh, scorched. But they say that, or, or the nervous system, it'll actually override the person's intelligence and pull the hand back. And the person will then register it in their mind. It'll come later, you know, a delayed reaction to that. And that's a way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the human beings. And I'm sure you've had experiences like that, right? Sticking your finger in the electric socket. I had an experience like that in, in Pakistan. And you know they have 220, right? It's not 110. And the whole wall was electrocuted and I was walking in the darkness. And I touched the wall trying to like turn on the air conditioner or something like that. And I got, you know, I even scared myself by how loud I screamed from that, from that electric shock. It was that serious. If you take your pen, make a dot on your paper, Right now, just take a dot. Okay, you see the dot on your paper? There was a time in your life where you were actually smaller than that. As a human being, you were smaller than that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took you from that dot, from that period on the, on the paper, to the human that you are now. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling the person to say, فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلَى Let the person look at from what he was created. خُلِقَ مِن مَّا إِن دافق, That he was created from water gushing forth يَخْرُجُ مِن بَيْنَ الصُّلْبِ Proceeding from the backbone Sulb is the backbone وَالثَّرَائِبْ And the ribs And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Indeed إِنَّهُ عَلَى رَجْعِهِ لَقَادَ That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has His qadr is able to bring him back That the same Lord that did, did this the first time That indeed Allah can do it again to the human إِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَجْعِهِ لَقَادِرٌ But when is that person going to be coming back? Allah Azza wa Jal says, يَوْمَ تُبْلَى السَّرَائِعِ On the day when the secrets will be exposed. And this also when a person is about to commit a sin, and then they think of a verse like this, يَوْمَ تُبْلَى السَّرَائِعِ That even though in this dunya it was a secret, on the day of judgment it won't be a secret anymore. And something that they're shy and embarrassed, that others would see them in this dunya, in the hereafter, all their secrets will be exposed. And so they should have haya and, and, and modesty and shame in this dunya, so that on that day, they'll come with a book that they're proud to say, ha umuqra'u kitabia. That here is my book, and read it. And they're proud to show it. Yawma tubla Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 9, Yawma tubla sara'ir, on that day when the secrets will be exposed, فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَلَا نَاصِرٍ That on that day, that there will be no power for that person and no one to help them. And like we saw in the earlier surahs, that many people in Mecca, because of their wealth and their power of their, um, their nadia, like we saw in Surah Iqra, that they thought that even if they were to go to the Day of Judgment, because of all their posse and men around them, they would able, be able to fight their way out of uh, hellfire. Or if the gatekeepers of hell came to take them, they would wrestle them down and be able to get away from them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَلَا نَاصِرٍ There's no power and nothing to assist the person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a testification within the surah, وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتَ الرَّجَعِ By the sky, as it, الرَّجَعِ is that, um, 
With the rain clouds giving rain, Ar-Raja means again and again bringing it down. وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الرَّجَعِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testifying by this. وَالْأَرْضِ And by the earth, that is Sada. So these are two uh, characterizations of the, the heavens, of the rain coming down from it, and the earth of the plants coming out. And they're related. The water coming down on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bringing the life. And the same Lord that created these things has the ability to bring humans back to life. And you'll see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the testification, the maqsum alayhi, innahu laqawlun fasl. That indeed, fasl, like if you say that, you know, fasl A and fasl B, that's uh, like classrooms. And they're called fasl because it divides the people. So this is, you know, the first, first grade, second grade, it's a fasl, it's cut off. So someone from third grade can't be in sixth grade and so on. Innahu laqawlun fasl. It's a qawl, qawl means statement, fasl, dividing the truth from falsehood. Like you say, the truth that separates the truth from falsehood. So within this qawl, there is nothing but the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلٌ فَصْلٌ وَمَا هُوَ بِالْهَزْلٌ Hazl is amusement or um, like a mockery or a joke. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that it's not a joke and it's not for mockery. وَمَا هُوَ بِالْهَزْلٌ And this is something that the people of Mecca used to do often and that is that they would mock and make fun of the Qur'an and the Muslims and the believers. وَمَا هُوَ بِالْهَزْلٌ And that it's not an issue to make fun and to take lightly. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهُمْ يَكِيدُونَ كَيْدًا And this is actually when, when people see others plotting against Islam, this is nothing more than the what we see in the Qur'an because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they will plot their plots. So when someone sees the kuffar plotting against the Muslims, it's not a shock. It's not like, oh my God, they're plotting against the Muslims. It's not a shock. In fact, when they see the plotting, a person sees that CNN or the, you know, this or that plotting against the Muslims, they, they would say it was uh, sadaqallah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told the truth. إِنَّهُمْ يَكِيدُونَ كَيْدَ That indeed they're plotting a plot and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also plotting وَأَكِيدُ كَيْدَ And I too am planning. And so it's their plots versus the plot of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show the weaknesses and the frailty of what they're plotting. This is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in in the dunya, their muk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about you know, they're plotting against uh, Islam against the Muslims وَإِنْ كَانَ مَكْرُهُمْ لِتَزُولَ مِنْهُ الْجِبَالِ That it's almost as if they're plotting will make the mountains wipe away. Meaning they're so powerful, the plotting of these mushrikeen and, and kuffar is so powerful of how deeply their plots go that it can knock out mountains. And I, I've listened to people speaking who have like studied like the Christian missionary uh, plans in Africa to Christianize Africa, and they've you know succeeded in a large way in of many of the Muslim countries. And one brother who was studying this, that when he studied it, he said, Subhanallah, the verse that kept coming in his mind was that verse: "In kana makruhum li tazula minhu al-jibat." That of their of their makka of their plotting, that it it is so powerful that it could wipe away mountains of how deeply the plot goes and how much money they're putting into these plots against Muslims. And we don't even have like a glimpse of how much they are putting into this campaign in Africa and other places to Christianize it and take it away from the Muslims. And they actually have deadlines to Christianize Africa. They have deadlines. And if you uh, speak to African people in the African countries, ask them their best schools in their country, they are Christian missionary schools. Anybody who's educated properly in those countries, not anybody... uh, in general, that they've been to Christian missionary schools and the Christians that come in from Europe to take care of those people whereas a Muslim speaker, for example, might come in once every five years or something like that and the, the effect is very minimal as opposed to all the wealth and time that the Christians are putting into those countries. One of the shiuch that was in um, Afghanistan and before all of this stuff happened, I won't mention his name uh, well, I'm sure they know he's in Afghanistan because the Americans were encouraging people to go to Afghanistan at that time. 
he was in Afghanistan and he, and he was saying that, and this is after you know, they had defeated the Russians and so on. He went out from uh, for Aisha Salah and he noticed there was a Christian missionary group and they had a big meeting going on on their compound. And he saw all of them ga- gathered on their table and they were discussing and plotting and so on. And he noticed this as they went for Aisha and then they came back, you know, brothers drinking tea and stuff like that. And they had gone to sleep. When they woke up and they went out for Salat al-Fajr, he saw that they were still in the meeting, in this Christian uh, missionary compound. And he said, SubhanAllah, while we were sleeping, they spent the whole night in plotting against the Muslims. In plotting against the Muslims. And he said, when you, when you see the things that happen in Afghanistan, it's not you know, the result of like a coincidence or something just fell apart. These are plots that have gone for many, many years. And people have worked very hard to bring down uh, the Muslims. And they succeeded in it. Allah Mustaan. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, فَمَهِّلِ الْكَافِرِينَ أَمْهِلْهُمْ رُوَيْدًا Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, فَمَهِّلِ الْكَافِرِينَ Give them respite because the time is coming. أَمْهِلْهُمْ that respite, deal gently with them, ruwaida for a while, because when the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, and this seizure, it'll come very severe and very intense. So it's upon the believer to be patient, to do his duty, until the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. Mm-hmm.